Ladies and gentlemen, K Kim here. Welcome to the uh, daily update. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Good day trading today. Market is up about 0.7%. Uh, pretty much led by the tech. However, Russell 2000 um, actually led the way towards the end of the day. Russell 2000, I think the small caps are up about 1.7%. I think Nasdaq did about the same. Everything else around uh, this level here today. So market initially gapped up. So this is where it closed yesterday, uh, or I mean Friday, and then uh, we gapped up here, right? And then we pretty much moved sideways throughout the day. And that has been pretty much the uh, trend throughout, I don't know, last several months. We've been seeing these pretty lethargic moves back in April, May, some in June, where we see a gap up and we don't see really a follow through, but we see kind of a sideways move. And we also talked about, uh, if you remember last couple weekends uh, on the weekend update video that, um, you know, when you're dealing with a big gap like this, that which we've been dealing with, you know, like 325 to 333, uh, unless, you know, uh, if you guys can recall, I said unless buyers go up there and fill this gap as quickly as possible, it could get a little bit, you know what I mean, lethargic or maybe some shenanigan. Um, because, you know, when the gap is uh, is a big size, there's a price discovery happening. People don't real they, they don't know what to do with that price because, you know, before it just gapped down. Right, so it was like three thirty-three, and then this was like the uh, the plunge, the February plunge, right? Late February plunge, I believe. Um, so you know, it plunged from three thirty-three to like three twenty-five in next day, um, back in late, late late February, and so we like the market doesn't really remember what to do in this price level. So when we see a move, it 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 tends to get lethargic. I think the first time we start to breach this gap was this day, right? This day right here on this gap up back in, you know, July 21st. And then, you know, we also talked about at that time that either bulls got up as quickly as possible. We start fizzling here too long. Things can get hectic. And then remember that we pulled back and then things got pretty hectic there, you know, for, I don't know, how long has it been? Um, for about a week or so, week and a half. And then bulls are trying up again. Got up here, still a little bit of that gap with this gap up, but then again, it's 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 lagging. We're not seeing a big push. And nothing wrong with that. Market is decide to do this way instead of seeing a, some big move, some big fast move to fill that gap right away. And and market is you know faithfully cultivating higher highs here. And so should there be another shenanigan, um, you know, we, we want to understand the level. So let's say if there's going to be a shenanigan going into tomorrow. And, and just keep in mind, when I say shenanigan, it doesn't always mean negative. Like it doesn't always mean like a bearish action. Shenanigan means doing the market. I mean, I guess <laughs> I guess I kind of made it up, you know, putting into um, trading and investing using this terminology what what I what I mean when I say shenanigan is not necessarily like bearish. It means most people expect something to it, most most people expect like the price actually lined up. Most people are expecting it to do something next day or this coming week, and market does something completely opposite and is shocking everyone. That's what I mean by shenanigan. So this was definitely a snatch shenanigan up move. And remember last week, I think Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday I talked about how shenanigan incoming or something like that, a title that shenanigan coming or shenanigan incoming. It could be a shenanigan up move, shenanigan down move. What, I'm, what I mean by that is even here. So this is a definitely a shenanigan where like everything looked bullish on this day, right? And we clear, you know, some of the pivot levels here. We're above all the moving averages. We got higher lows and higher highs. Everything looked bullish on this day back in July 29th. And out of nowhere, just out of nowhere, we see a gap down. That's a shenanigan, right? Like we understand when, when we see a some down move, right? And then a gap down, okay, we see a continuation. That's kind of like a lot of people expect that. We see a some down move, and then we see a gap down next day or continuation. That's expected. But when you see up move, and then like out of nowhere, we just see pretty decent sized gap down out of nowhere. That's a shenanigan. And you think after this kind of decent gap down, and I could also see some people calling this potentially 
a head and shoulder formation, that being potential neckline. And then we saw a gap down and then we see a, a you know, a follow through to the downside on that hour. And then we so casually market just gets right back up, right? So that that's in itself was a shenanigan. And then we see a gap up, right? We see a gap up next following day, right? Gapping above the recent down gap. And then we just crap. Just, 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 just fade very, very fast, and we continue to fade. And normally, in this kind of circumstances where the gap fails and none of the supports hold, usually that's a bearish price action, right? Usually, you're gonna see some kind of a follow through to the downside next day, at least for a couple days or so. Takes a while for the buyers kind of recoup from them, maybe some consolidation, reversal pattern, or something. Same day, same day, right? We saw this gap up, flush to the downside, and then same day we made a higher high. I don't think I've ever seen that kind of price action. You know, fair. I don't remember the last time I saw something like that happening intraday, all in one. That right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I mean when I say shenanigan. That's a shenanigan. Gap up, phase, continue lower, and then same hour or same day, a couple hours later, we cl closes above the gap up faded area. I don't remember the last time I've seen that kind of sequence in one day. So, and this is something that I've been talking about since early last week that there will be shenanigans. Shenanigans to the downside, shenanigans to the upside. And every time when you're dealing with the shenanigans, what do we have to do? We don't have to worry about, you know, you don't have to be scared about shenanigans because shenanigans is part of kind of a market's movement, right? I mean, you know, you're gonna see some shenanigans and up and down moves and, and that's how the market likes to operate sometimes. It's not always smooth. If everything was smooth, every market is moving just the way everybody expected it to, then everybody will be making money, everybody will be rich. Well, it actually doesn't. Market usually fools the majority most of the time. So when there's a shenanigan, stop focusing on the short term and then look at the long term here, which we've been talking about my midterm moving average, right? And all these, you know, sideways, all these abrupt sell off. You know, I've been navigating this market with you guys every single day. I say, you know what? The posture should be bullish. The posture should be bullish. Short term, there's some selling pressure. Short term, there's a selling pressure. Short term, there's a selling pressure. Short term, there's selling pressure. But we want to have a bullish posture overall. And that's what I've been talking about pretty much in pretty much the entire month of July. And just to recap the last seven minutes in this video, and with, the, with much expected shenanigans, we're up here, right? So now, what are we gonna expect going into tomorrow, right? Well, buyers are tired. We are at this level where we are at this tired level. We are overbought in the short term. Buyers gotten up, got higher lows here. Let me adjust this real quick. Yep, there. So we've uh, cleared this resistance. Uh, we've uh, cultivated high and low here, but we are getting into the overbought level. So, but remember, we're in this environment where we could see shenanigan to the upside also, meaning, well, wow, that's overbought, man. I think buyers are tired, and that's what make, that's what this market is gonna make everyone believe. And then out of nowhere, we see a big gap up or something like this. So keep in mind for shenanigan to the upside or downside. Uh, right now, bulls are getting tired. So best case scenario for the buyers, gap up. Because gap up, um, it's not going to affect this uh, this this uh, oscillator. So let's say we gap up tomorrow. It's going to stay where it is. That's a good thing about gap it Gap ups doesn't move the oscillator. Oscillator only moves on a move throughout the day. So we could see a gap up and then we could see move sideways and then we can reset it before making another move because you know market can correct through time or correct through price. Best case scenario for the bears, however, is gapping it down, make it into this an island top 
and gap it down below 326. That's not a big gap. And then if we see something like that, we may come back down to retest that midterm moving average there. If, buy, if, if we just continue to see sellers and bring it down, sliding it down tomorrow, the gap, what happens when the gap gets filled? It's going to act as support. We do see a, my short-term moving average residing in that vicinity. We did act as support here on Friday. We saw that big up and down shenanigan here. That was a short-term moving average. It's residing right here at 326, which is coinciding with the gap fill area, right? That area, 23, 26, 325, it's a, it's a pretty strong support in the short term because we have that prior pivot also, short-term moving average, and gap fill. So best case scenario for the sellers, gap it down below 326, make that into an island top and continue lower. Best case scenario for the buyers, gap it up. If you gap up, this oscillator will stay the same and then potentially move sideways or come down and fill the gap. I think the best case scenario, so how is buyers gonna utilize this, this overbought sentiment, right? Let's see a gap up and then come down and fill the gap, right? And then have that oscillator reset and then potentially go higher, something like that. Or we could see a gap up and then just moving sideways all day like it did today and then let the oscillator kind of reset and then make a move. So. So going into tomorrow, your posture, overall pot, despite the fact that we have overbought sentiment that buyers are tired, it still needs to be a bullish posture overall with the sentiment to understand the sentiment that the buyers are tired. If we see a gap down, bears are going to lead in at least, you know, uh, pretty much could, pretty be, could be throughout the day if we see an island, island top. So... I'll come back for you guys tomorrow. If I see anything developing tomorrow morning or something like that, you can follow me at 2K Kim. I was tweeting things out today with my oscillator and things like that. When it crossed, crossed when it you know cleared my resistance, I was out after I when it cleared my resistance here. I, I did tweet things out that it cleared it, um, and then I was out throughout the day. So I just opened up my um, e signal here and and then now I saw that we're at that overbought level, so I couldn't able to tweet at night at earlier when that thing got up to because i think the fifth hour we did see that um that it was at over bottom so that sixth hour we were not able to push higher because buyers were getting tired right so i'll tweet things out tomorrow if i see any kind of development if i see you know some kind of i don't know island top or any kind of gap up or something uh, I'll, I'll try and do my best to share with you guys so you guys can understand you guys can have a kind of good idea what we can expect going into rest of the day tomorrow enjoy your evening Good luck trading tomorrow.